Hey guys, what's going on? This is Justin with Technical Gamer, and today we are talking about some Nintendo NX rumors. Uh, that's right, these are just rumors, okay? So disclaimer, uh, this information could change uh, before the console releases, hopefully March of next year. Uh, Eurogamer.net has released some really, really big rumors today. Uh, the reason they're really big is because they seem very credible. Eurogamer is typically very credible with its rumors, and has been so in the past. Uh, and they state on their website, uh, so through several sources close to them, uh, they have information as to what type of console the Nintendo NX is, uh, several form factor information, uh, how the console works, how the controller works, along with the specifications of the console. So essentially the Nintendo NX is a tablet style console, so the, the actual guts of the of the console, the actual brains of the console, is inside the tablet controller. So it's it's a complete reversal on the Wii U, where as before the the core unit that you left at home had the had the brains. This time the brains are going to be inside the tablet, supposedly. So Eurogamer.net saying that the tablet is primarily a tablet console, uh, and on the tablet you have controls that are very traditional you gotta have a d-pad it looks like an ABXY button do I unlock sticks uh, possibly shoulder buttons we're not sure uh, now these controllers uh, when you take it home has a kickstand style feature and it also has a docking station that may or may not be sold separately we're not sure uh, that you can use to connect to your HDTV now when you do this, you can also have the option of detaching these traditional style controllers that are on the left and right of the tablet screen and use them for some sort of wireless multiplayer aspect or an alternative way to play with your games. So that's really cool. That sounds pretty innovative. And that's really the name of the game here and as always with Nintendo is, is, is innovation. So what else they've learned is that what's inside the upcoming NX supposedly is going to be a Tegra NVIDIA Tegra based chip so and we believe this to be the Tegra X1 the report reads so then the Tegra X1 is a chip that first surfaced commercially in the NVIDIA Android Shield TV that came out I believe April of this year uh, for $199 for the base console, $299 for the pro console uh, that has a actual a much bigger hard drive. So, so the Invi NVIDIA Shield Android TV hosting the NVIDIA X1, NVIDIA Tegra X1 chip in it, 3 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 cores of the Maxwell-based GPU. So this is all good and all, uh, and according to reviews and reports, the NVIDIA Android Shield TV, or we'll just call it the NVIDIA ATV, uh, does pretty good in benchmarks and, and game performance, especially in OpenGL games, it does really well. Uh, there was a report uh, that we're seeing here from Digital Foundry, where they kind of put these two head to head, where a few games like Doom 3 BFG, uh, the game runs much better on the Android uh, ATV, versus the Xbox 360 or PS3, but that's not really saying a whole lot. Uh, it's running 1080p60 on the Android Shield TV versus 720p60 with frame drops. So, and then trying to running 1080p30 on the Android Shield TV versus 720p30 on Xbox 360 and PS3. So that's interesting, so it can do more, but again, these consoles are super old news, 2005, 2006 when they first came out. I mean, it, the comparison's not really valid anymore. Uh, and then it goes on to say that with DirectX based forces, Resident Evil 5 and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, it doesn't do so well, and the dedicated console ports just do a better job. So, this is concerning. Uh, Nintendo was going to be innovative, and we knew that from the beginning that they were going to try to change things and make things different. But if some if these rumors are true about it about the the actual CPU being in the tablet and being able to take it home and dock it and hook it up to your HDTV, which which that would be kind of weird. I mean, 
is a HDMI cable going to run from the back of the tablet all the way out to your TV? Plus, you're probably going to have to be plugged in because this battery life's probably going to be that great. That's going to be really weird. I'm thinking it'll probably have some sort of wireless HDMI dongle that you'll plug into the back of the TV that it will then communicate back and forth to uh, between the tablet and the TV, probably with close proximity, 25, 50 feet. Um, but in that way, all you do is just have it plugged in and you can still use it as a controller or whatever. Uh, but still the, the specs is here. What's interest me the most. So, uh, an Tegra X one chip, which is a fast chip. Uh, when it comes to mobile, mobile CPUs, mobile GPUs, it's one of the fastest. It actually is the fastest mobile GPU when it comes to ultra portables, tablets, cell phones. It is, it's just right now it's the bee's knees. It is the top stuff. Uh, but when we're going into the console competition, it just doesn't hold up. So I decided to do a little bit of a comparison uh, between some top of the line mobile devices. We've got here the Galaxy S7, HTC 10, Nexus 6P using GFX Bench uh, off screen performance uh, as kind of a way to say, hey, you know, how what does it do on games um, versus. Like the, the uh, Apple iPhone 6S as well. Uh, and then also some other previous uh, versions, including I got some OpenGL numbers for the mobile Radeon Mobility 4650, which is a very close proximity to the Nintendo Wii U, according to a Digital Foundry article some years ago where they got a hold of a picture of the silicon die of the Radeon GPU inside the Wii U and broke it down. Uh, along with an Alienware M11X laptop, because that's fairly close to Xbox 360 PS3. I remember when that when that laptop first came out in 2011, uh, it was it was kind of showcased as being a way to play console equivalent games, but on the go on a laptop. So um, I used to have one, and I can vouch for that. It was it was pretty on par with Xbox 360 PS3, if not a little bit higher than those. Uh, and I decided to make a little bit of a graph here that I got. And I got this information through uh, GFX Bench and searching these different uh, GPU chips and looking up their OpenGL off screen performances uh, across the board to kind of get an idea about where does the Tegra X1 stand with a lot of these other chips. So the Tegra X1 gets about 120 frames per second on the T Rex uh, and about 60 frames per second on the Manhattan, the much more. Uh, intensive uh, benchmark so those are pretty those are super impressive when it comes to the mobile field those frames per second are great uh, you can see there versus the iPhone 6s and the Galaxy S7 it's just it's better than them by almost twice the amount and almost every aspect so that's great uh, and compared to the original Wii U which I uh, based off approximately the mobility 4650 uh, it's about twice as fast so yeah, I mean, see, you see where we're kind of going here, where Nintendo, as far as performance, they're talking about just a slight incrementation, just about two, two and a half times the speed, you know, graphics fidelity clearly isn't too much of an issue for them right here. Uh, and if you guys remember the Razer Edge Pro uh, that came out in 2013, which this console idea really reminds me of the Razer Edge Pro. And let's see if I can find a picture of this guy this thing I remember when this thing first came out I was like yes this thing is so cool right here uh, the Razer Edge Pro when it came out in 2013 I believe the MSRP on it was twelve hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars uh, and it was a gaming tablet uh, that you could get accessories to it to snap on these controller style attachments to the left and right of it uh, and you could play your PC games on the go, and they were considered like console uh, complete, console competitive uh, as far as quality goes games. Uh, and it, it did a good job. It, in some cases, it was better. Actually, in all cases, it was better than Xbox 360, PS3. But still, compared to um, what's in PS4 and Xbox One, it just it just doesn't hold up even today. But if it makes any of us feel any better. According to my little charts here, uh, the upcoming Nintendo NX is actually faster. The Tegra X1 is actually faster than the GT640M LE that was in the Razer Edge Pro. 
that was twelve hundred dollars three years ago so that's that's pretty impressive uh, but you can see here that it's uh, everything pretty much beats the PS Vita uh, the power VR SGX 543 MP4 was great for its time now it's just nothing so it's about 20 times as fast as the PS Vita compared to the NX but then you look at the Xbox one and it's about mm, the Xbox one is about twice as fast and then the PS4 is about three times as fast compared to the Nintendo NX. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we were to compare it to the top-of-the-line tablets and smartphones and Android game players on the market, then, yeah, it's it's doing great. But compared to PS4, Xbox One, or, of course, PC, uh, even, a, even kind of a mid-range budget kind of gaming PC build, it's not doing so hot. So what does all this mean for these these differences, these performance differences, these uh, format differences for the NX? Uh, well, it means that we can play our awesome Nintendo style console style games on the go uh, or at home. Uh, it also means that most likely uh, there will no longer be Nintendo 3DS library games or Nintendo Wii U games. Uh, instead, it will just be all one platform, the Nintendo NX. Um, this also means that backwards compatibility is very unlikely. This is a complete change in system architecture and design uh, versus what was on the Wii U. So backwards compatibility is very unlikely. Um, so yeah, this is this is a big change. If you go out and buy a game that's for a Nintendo console after the NX comes out, you can be assured that you can take this game on the go and play it anywhere you want. Uh, or you can take it home and and you can play it on the TV. Um, and another bit of information that we have here is that which we I think we've heard before is the Nintendo NX will use cartridges. Uh, I believe these cartridges to be more like kind of like an SD card, uh, but probably a proprietary format to help with piracy. Uh, and it states here in the Eurogamer article that Nintendo recommends. Uh, developers use 32 gigabyte game sizes, which goes right in si right in line with flash memory uh, that we typically see. Uh, so this is this is fine. This has great benefits. One, faster load times uh, in getting your game going. Two, you no longer have to install your game on the internal hard drive like the PS4, which is extremely annoying and frustrating and takes up way too much space. Uh, and you can also actually save game data on the actual game, which has some really really good bonuses. Uh, and what's great is obviously SD card style memory can easily be taken on the go into a tablet style controller without taking up too much space or having to spin up like a disc would or take up all that power. Uh, so I think it's a win-win. The only downside is it's going to cost more money to manufacture these games uh, on a physical style or in a physical format. Um, but I think... I think in the end it's going to be great. I mean, oh, and the other thing is that if a developer needs more than 32 gigabyte, they'll probably have to bump up to the 64 gigabyte. That's going to cost them even more money. Uh, but they could probably just say, hey, you know, get the patches, download patches, put it in the internal memory. Um, for I think for most games out there, 32 gigabyte is sufficient. But of course, games are getting bigger and bigger. So, but there's always that 64 gigabyte. But the developer is going to have to eat that cost. So, but that brings us to the biggest point here with what's different about the NX is is it going to secure third-party support so that's it I mean the, the graphics don't have to be super fancy like equal to PS4 or Xbox one or greater than that uh, but w they do need to have good games there does need to be a compelling library on the console for it to be a worthwhile console uh, and we know Nintendo and its second-party developers can crank out some pretty good games but usually, you know, at the end of the lifestyle, like on the or the life cycle, like on the Wii U, you'll have about a dozen really good games and a handful of so-so games, and that's about it over a course of five years, because that's all these developers can produce on their by, them, by themselves. But if you have third-party support, especially if you've got strong third-party support, that game library can increase exponentially. So that's the question are third parties on board are third parties going to develop games for this console are they continue are they going to continue to support this console if you see the next assassin's Creed game coming out on ps4 and xbox one or ps neo and xbox one scorpio is it going to be developed and ported over to the nx or are they just going to say forget it all together they ain't going to they're not going to mess with it so that's the biggest thing if we can get strong third party support with this drastic uh, style change then we've got a pretty good console in our hands 
you know, bring the games to the console and you've got a good console. No matter what the format really is, no matter how powerful the graphics are, um, it just needs good games. In some of the patent files from the Nintendo NX, uh, it's we see a server apparatus there as if somehow you might can maybe stream games like NVIDIA's game stream that was on the Android Shield TV or is on the Android Shield TV. Uh, and I think this is a very good possibility. I think Nintendo may start a game streaming service where you can stream more complex games or games maybe from the Wii or, or from the Wii uh, through a kind of pseudo backwards, uh, backwards compatibility move. Uh, we very well may see that with the Wii U. Um, so what do I think about all these rumors? Do I think they're true? Do I think that uh, this is really the big, the real deal? And yes, I do. I actually think that these rumors are very credible. I think they go right in line with what Nintendo does and what they've been talking about the NX and the patents that we've been seeing for the past several months to the past year or two. Um, I'm really hoping that it's not the Tegra X1 chip. Uh, it's just not fast enough to compete with console counterparts. The RAM's just not fast enough. There's not enough uh, Maxwell cores. Uh, now, it would be awesome, it'd be absolutely awesome if NVIDIA and Nintendo are working together behind the scenes to produce the Integra X2, which is supposedly going to use Pascal architecture with a smaller manufacturing process. That would be great. We could see more cores and a higher bandwidth memory, uh, resulting in increased performance in that chart that we looked at earlier. Uh, that we're seeing here so if that could happen we could see as much as two times the performance than what we're looking at here in this chart and that would be great because that would put it much closer to the xbox one and now we're talking and and again and a console that you can take with you as well so that would be very future proof uh, and very competitive and it'd be much easier for developers to say okay you know let's put it on all of them you know but and play to each other's strengths uh, so hopefully nintendo will be smart and push that uh, and work with NVIDIA and provide the next generational leap in mobile computing. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching me uh, and listening to me ramble about the Nintendo NX upcoming console and the rumors that may or may not be true. This whole video may be a mute point in two months when Nintendo will hopefully uh, give us an official statement about this console and the release date and price and all that good stuff. And uh, if you like to me ramble about te technology and you want to hear more about it, please subscribe to my channel uh, where I do a lot of gaming uh, news and gaming reviews and let's plays and technology information. And I will catch you on the next video. See you later.